As a bass angler, we all love those moments where you get that arm breaking strike. Well, today we're gonna to talk about a certain lure and presentation that's gonna give you those arm ripping strikes all the time. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get going with the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, punch that notification bell, drop a comment, share the video. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the power of the swim jig. This one bait right here can give you more arm ripping strikes than just about any other type of lure that you can throw. So I'm gonna be talking about three different ways to fish the swim jig. It's a very simple presentation, it's effective throughout the year, and it's something that beginning bass anglers can have excellent success with as well. So this right here is just a quarter ounce swim jig. Uh, you may be asking yourself, what is the difference between a swim jig and a flipping jig? And we've actually covered that in previous videos, but in case you haven't seen those, uh, the big thing here is the head design. A swim jig is meant to move horizontally through the water column. And as you can see with this narrow profile, this slender profile, this is gonna come through vegetation and the water very, very easily in a horizontal manner. Uh, on here, I've got a Menace Twin Tail Grub trailer, and the color here is actually bluegill and then honey candy. And the reason I picked this particular one is because this lake that I'm fishing here, there are no shad. The main forage base, as far as bait fish, are bluegills. So that is why I got this particular color. Uh, you can see it's got some of the orange down here like a bluegill does. Uh, but this is why I use this particular one. And I use this trailer, this twin tail menace grub here, because it really resists a lot of water and I can fish it slowly and it'll still maintain its um, position in the water column. So that's really important as well. Um, some of the other nice things on these swim jigs, uh, they've got the uh, trailer keeper on here. I still like to use super, super glue on my trailers most of the time, it just holds them on there. And you may be wondering, you may have noticed that I've got braid on this particular one, even though I'm gonna be fishing some pretty crystal clear water. I fish a swim jig a lot of times, either on flora or mono because of the clear water I'm on, but I'm gonna talk specifically on why I am using braid for one of the presentations we're gonna be talking about today. So let's go ahead and jump up here on the front deck of the boat and go over these three different swim jig presentations. Let's go ahead and get started with the swim jig and some different presentations. And the first thing that I want to talk about is just kind of a little bit about the history of the swim jig. Now a swim jig is nothing new. It has been around for a long, long time. And about six, seven years ago, it got really popular and it's still a mainstay on a lot of the professional circus for sure. But there is one guy in La Crosse, Wisconsin by the name of Tom Monsoor that really, I feel in my opinion, is credited as being kind of like the, the swim jig guru. He fishes a swim jig most of the time. He's done really well over the years on the FLW tour. And he fishes it throughout the seasons, okay, throughout the entire year. And he will use it in situations where maybe you wouldn't think normally about using a swim jig. And the reason being is because he has so much confidence in it. And I was watching an interview with him, oh, probably about seven or eight years ago. And one of the presentations that we're going to go over right now, I kind of like to call the Tom Monsoor presentation. And he would say this, to make it as simple as possible, he likes to say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You've probably heard that before. So in this situation, I'm going to reel this in and I'm going to say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Now, you could say it silently so you don't drive your boat partner crazy. Uh, but the reason that I'm doing this and what Tom says is it 
helps you to fish the jig slow. One thing that we often do as bass anglers is we fish everything too fast. When you, when you say that phrase, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, it helps you to keep the bait coming horizontally through the water, but it also maintains this type of an action just like this. And we've talked about this in lots of different videos. When a fish, a bait fish, is kind of in those last death throws, they will kick up, maintain a little bit of their stability, but then they float back down and they kind of kip, kick up again and then float back down. So that's exactly what this first presentation, the Tom Monsoor presentation, does. Just move the rod like this and you want that bait to go as slow as possible without falling, okay, without sinking. Now the second presentation is very similar, but I'm going to do more just of a straight swim as opposed to pulsing it. And my goal here, my objective for this presentation is to get deeper, okay, so with the same bait, this time it's a quarter ounce, with this same bait I can fish really, really deep, okay? And I'm just slightly pulsing it, it's more of a straight swim back. And my goal, especially if you fish clear or clearer water, is you want that bait to be just out of sight. It's my belief that a lot of those better predators are just out of that area where the light penetration is. Okay, whether that's because there's a weed bed down there or even if it's open water, they're going to be just down outside the range of that light penetration. So I use this straight swim to get deeper. Like I said, you can pulse it just a little bit, but it is amazing, even with like this quarter ounce swim jig, how deep you can get. I can fish, you know, 12, 15 feet really easy just doing this. And I know that that twin tail grub is really kicking away and putting a lot of action back there. Another really good trailer is a paddle tail uh, jerk bait on the back of a swim jig, works really well, uh, displaces a lot of water so you can maintain that horizontal presentation and that works really well on a straight swim. So the first one was the Tom Monsoor, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The second presentation is the straight swim. The third presentation, I like the credit to Randy Howell. A lot of you may know Randy Howell as far as um, uh, hearing of him. He has fished uh, the Pro Tours many, 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 many years. And he likes to take his swim jig and he does something a little bit different with it, and that's why I have braid on here. He likes to take his swim jig and pop it like this, all the way back to the boat. So that bait down there under the water is really kind of just giving a hard twitch the entire way. And uh, he picked up that particular technique down on Lake Gunnersville in Alabama. So this is what it looks like as he fishes a swim jig. And the reason for the braid is because the braid has no give whatsoever. You have immediate contact between the energy that you're imparting onto the rod and the energy is immediately transferred through the braid, which has no stretch, no give, and right to your bait. So that is why he uses braid. As a matter of fact, he says, I, I don't even think you can do this presentation as effectively without braid. That's how much he believes in it. But so this is what the third presentation looks like. You're giving that bait a really hard twitch all the way back, keeping it up there near the top of the water column. and you know, hoping for a reaction strike. And I'll be honest, this way is by far the most exhausting of all of them. I prefer myself to do the Tom Monsoor retrieve just like this. This is what I do 90% of the time. And one thing to mention with a swim jig, if you're trying to get to a little deeper depth and you, you throw it out there, 
be aware that you're gonna get some strikes on the drop as well. I hope that you learned something today with the three different swim jig presentations that we went over. This is one of those lures, if I've got you know four or five or 10 rods out of my rod deck uh, here on the boat, a swim jig is something that you will always find on my boat deck because it's so effective, not only for getting those arm ripping strikes that we've been talking about, but it's an excellent surf bait as well. And fish oftentimes will show themselves, and even if they don't hit it, you know where they're at, and then they, you can go back and fish something else, else and follow up. But man, this is something I always, always have tied on. So I hope you learned a few things today. Don't forget to go out and encourage somebody today. You never know how you're gonna change their life. And for the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.